Loving yourself means to accept yourself just as you are. But who are you? Do you really know? Most of us don't really know ourselves very well beneath the surface, beneath the roles we play, beneath the persona that we have created in order to appease others. Most of us have spent our entire lives trying to be someone else, to be what others want us to be, to live as others live, according to someone else's standards and expectations, according to what is considered normal or respectable or socially acceptable. And we can become so immersed in that persona that we don't really know ourselves. We only know who we pretend to be. So we might understand that it's important to love ourselves, but how can we love someone who we don't really know? How can we get to know ourselves more deeply, more intimately? To be intimate with someone, you have to spend time with them, getting to know them deeply, attentively, and without distractions. You have to take time to learn about that person, their innermost thoughts, their beliefs, their doubts, their dreams, their fears. And you must inquire and listen without judgment or criticism, but with compassion and understanding. So it's the same way with oneself. If you want to know yourself intimately, it's important to spend time alone, away from others, away from distractions, to give yourself your full attention, to look deeply within, to inquire deeply, to explore, to examine, to observe, and to understand oneself. And to be alone, in solitude, free from the judgments and opinions of others, free from the seeking of validation, to discover your own intrinsic value, which does not depend upon anyone else's opinion of you, to accept yourself even in spite of being unacceptable to others, to accept your imperfections and forgive your mistakes, to appreciate your gifts and virtues and to cultivate them, to care for yourself and heal your wounds, to release whatever shame or regret you might be carrying, to discover your integrity and authenticity and the courage to be true to who you are. You see, when we're constantly around other people, there's a tendency to seek approval and acceptance and to be acceptable, we have to adjust ourselves in ways that are inauthentic. And we can even do this to such an extent that nothing we say or do is authentic. That our entire persona is a performance. And we're just playing a role. And we can easily lose ourselves in that role, forgetting who we truly are. But when we're alone, there's no one to please, no one to impress, no one to approve or disapprove. In that space, we have the freedom to be ourselves truly and authentically. And we can learn to love and appreciate ourselves just as we are, without needing to be anything other than what we are. And the more that we love ourselves in this way, the less we feel the need for someone else's approval or validation. And so when we no longer need others to validate us, we can be authentic even when we're around those who don't approve of us. Most of us do our best to avoid being alone, or when we do find ourselves alone, we try desperately to get away from ourselves, to seek out the company of others or find some other way to distract ourselves. But what I'm suggesting is that when we're alone, that we embrace it, that we see it as a valuable opportunity to spend quality time with ourselves. What we don't often realize is that the relationship we have with ourselves is the most important relationship because it's the foundation of all other relationships. The way that we feel about ourselves, the way that we treat ourselves and so on. All of this is reflected in our relationships with others. And the quality of those relationships depends very much on the quality of the relationship we have with ourselves. If, for example, we have a low opinion of ourselves, if we don't genuinely love and respect ourselves, then not only do we find difficulty genuinely loving and respecting others, but we also allow others to treat us with disrespect 
or if we don't understand ourselves, if we don't know how to forgive ourselves, then we will find it difficult to understand others and to be forgiving. And this can cause a great deal of conflict in our relationships. So all of this is very important to understand. And when I talk about being in solitude, I'm not suggesting that you have to become a hermit, that you dissolve all your relationships and completely isolate yourself from the world, but that you embrace your time alone as an opportunity to learn about yourself, to really appreciate and honor who you are, to learn to be in that space without the desperate need to escape. Most of us don't realize that all the problems that arise in relationships with others could so easily be resolved if we could learn to resolve our own personal issues, our own insecurities, and so on. If we could learn to love ourselves truly, deeply, and unconditionally. If you find this content valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.